Good evening. Sorry I was off on, uh, was it Tuesday? Tuesday. Ba-dum, ba-dum. So don't forget this month we have a, hmm, played a new game, name standard. Game mode standard. What is all this? Yeah, standard. Standard's good. I'm going to pop right on in. Don't forget this month we are uh, doing a... Oh, that's neat. The world actually changes when you look at the overview. You can see how far I got on this one. All right, so new game. Let's load her up. We're doing a monthly giveaway. This month, it's any game that's going to be on your wish list. It's the Wish and Give. The impact is imminent. Volume seems a little low. What's going on? Can't I see? There we go. Options. Let's get the audio up a little bit. Oh, that would explain it. Done. All righty. So, let's see here. Crack back back. I don't need all of this on me. I did that. Dumbly. Your crafting station. Here we go. I need a backpack, which is iron iron. 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 I might as well just grab this one here. And some silicon. Skip. Nope. Okay, backpack first. We go into tab, put it into our slot. Let's see, oxygen. I need magnesium next, which is. Uh, it's like a, a brown protruding rock. Brownish protruding rock. There it is. Right there. That's a little sucker we need. There we go. Boop. We can build the oxygen tank, which is really important for the other game because uh, you get oxygen starved in the very beginning. Let's see here. Slap that on there. What else do we have? Construction chip, silicon, magnesium, magnesium. And later on, I'm going to want to build on a, uh, on a higher platform because all of this is going to turn into something. You'll see that later. And I want to build over where the hell am I okay there's the ship oh I want to build I want to build kind of over there that's really far away that's kind of unfortunate and if you're new to the channel or you still exist to the channel don't forget to check out your channel points explanation mark points and every 10 minutes you gain points in order to enter into the uh, the monthly giveaway that if you don't enter into this month, you can enter in next month or the month after that. Your choice. And your bits, subs, ad time, and all that other fun junk goes to charities and gets recycled right back in the community. I also forgot what it was that I was looking for. I'm grabbing a little bit of everything. We got two more slots. Okay, now I have two more slots. Yep. Oh, I may be a little too far away from that. Yeah, oxygen. Uh, oxygen goes away really quick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. And deconstruction, that'll work for now. Slot you two. Now I can build. See how far in that direction I can actually get. Ooh, wait, my stuff. Let me see. I've got two iron. That requires two. That requires a third iron. 
necessarily need cobalt right now, so we'll ditch that. Take you, you. I don't have water. I don't need titanium right now. Okay. I want to kind of get started up there. Then I can build that little, little hub around here, over there, so I can stay alive. What are you? Oh. That looked like an alien thing. I don't think it would just be ice. <clears throat> I love the look of the unterraformed planet. Sometimes you get lucky and your ship, like, lands there, but I've learned that uh, there's a bit of an RNG factor to it. Your ship can land in all kinds of places. All right, so I kind of want to be about here. Where's about the highest point? Up there looks good. Get ourselves a oh shit. Iron, iron, iron. I know, I know. And I can breathe. For whatever reason, if you build one of these little habitats, you can always breathe. I need more iron. I also need water. So that was a little crafting station over here. Good. I can build the basic stuff like water. It's weird that once you get up here, it's harder to find iron. But down there, it was... Kind of easy. No power. Oh, yeah. No, I know that. I need to build... Where are you? This thing. Which I also need iron for. Oh, my kingdom for a piece of iron. Titanium. There we go. Iron. Silicon is always good. Titanium. Garbage, garbage, garbage. There we go. Nothing that way. Go. The neat part about your power, you can literally build it anywhere and it powers up your bases. I need to get back really quick. And that's why. Okay, a chest would be nice. I've got a buddy who throws all his stuff on the ground. Okay, I don't need food on me, but I should keep oxygen on me at almost all times. Hello! Oh yeah, no, no, Izzy, Izzy, I already know that scam. You can just, you can just go away. Like, like even the same name for the scam, I, I know that. So, just, just go away. <laughs> If you had a different scam, maybe I would have fallen for it. But you guys have been doing this to me for literally a year. So, no. In fact, I'm just, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and we're just going to get rid of you right now. There we go. Bye, Izzy. Try, try that scam somewhere else. You know, the funny part is, I'm pretty sure the account that he just listed on there uh, is has already been banned by Discord. It, it doesn't exist. That's how old these bots are. No, I actually need titanium. Here, you brain-looking thing. Okay, I don't have iridium. Um, I could use a drill. Let's see, get to you. And I kind of like to put drills in places that I'm almost 
never really going to build in. Mm, yeah, build the door. Give it a little bit more power. But yeah, if you guys ever see someone who comes on and is like, hey, I want to be a fan of yours, follow me on Discord, it's a scammer. I'm just shocked they haven't changed the name. Let's see, a veggie tube. I think I have a seed, right? Yeah, there we go. Let's see. I do need to build more power. Granted, I haven't really made a whole bunch of stuff. I just need iron. The sand falls. It's about to get nighttime. And nighttime on this planet, uh, it gets crazy dark. There is a flashlight mod. How did I miss that? How did I miss these? Huh. No matter. Also, one of my favorite things in this game is to uh eat. then you get inside. Is it just kind of build this stuff around the world? So as you're going through, it actually looks like you're you're actually terraforming a planet. What else can I build? The drills I'm going to keep close to because at some point in time I'm going to deactivate them. Like right here? I'm never going to build here. So as you look around, it just kind of looks like you're slowly starting to terraform the planet itself. And it just looks neat. I don't have any more plants. I don't have a table yet. Or wait, do I have a table? Another iron. Maybe we can find an iron over here. Could use seconds. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's an iron. I'll take it. I think if you find a chest, you should always disable them. Or not disable, but get, delete them like that. Oh shit, my inventory is full. Um, let's just get rid of that. Oxygen tanks are easy enough. You just need two of those uh, blue materials there. Toss in the crafting machine. And you got it. Oh. Food is a little bit more difficult, especially in the beginning of the game. You need to go hunt down through ships like that one over there. I will probably build out to the... L Ooh. Piece of candy. Cobalt. There we go. Oh, that's a big screen. Um. Oh, come on, work with me, game. I'm like right here in the middle. Oh, because I have it the wrong direction. Uh, 
Come on, do it. There we go. A little bit. Another iron. So when you're trying to upgrade stuff, I'm going to a little blueprint console here. <coughs> This is your overall terraformation, and this starts to unlock through these items this way. That's actually quite a Oh, there's a lot more there. That's a lot more than what I was playing. Or is it? No, there's more stuff here than when I last played. Your oxygen has its own little tier here as well. 42 PPQ, and you need 1.0 PPQ, PPT, or unlock, which is 1,000 of this. Heat, I have nothing generation. Um... I need to fix that by finding Iridium. First things first, I'm going to dump off all this stuff. Or dump off what I can. I need something else. I need the flashlight. Silicone, magnesium, magnesium. One silicone. I need to build oxygen, so I'll take one of these. Three silicone. I could use a bit more iron as well, because when you're building out and Exploring, like I'm gonna go explore the ship over there. You want a little hub. Take one more cobalt so I can make two oxygen tanks. That should do it. Yeah, even this little trip over here is kind of a tax on oxygen. as I run through. Like, Spear of the Devil, right here. Got a little bit of you. Plenty of water and oxygen. We got tons of oxygen. Backpack 2 is still locked. Oh, I should have built the oxygen tanks. I think number 2 just unlocked. Where is my shuttle? There it is. Running, running. Ooh. Hey, one more of you. We can just get here with a little bit of oxygen to spare. No, oh, no, I have the tier one. Well, that's okay. could build one more oxygen if I really, really needed it, but I don't. Don't need the construction module. I do need flashlight. I can put you in here for now. Okay. And we're going to go up to there. I don't need magnesium. Yeah, there we go. Since my inventory is limited, I need to bring back what I, I can actually use. The Parts for like a heater is going to be really important. Stuff to make uh, additional oxygen tanks are going to be important. Uh, the oxygen generating machine is going to be really important. Yep. Ooh, a tank. What do you got in here? Garbage. That's either the entrance or it's over here to the left. And I don't remember. Ah, shit, I threw away the construction module. I did actually need that because I need to build the hut. Uh, 
I done a goof. That would have been helpful a little while ago. I might still be able to build it here. Oh, I need the crafting module in there. Okay. Well, live and learn. The other way to get blueprints, and I think these ones are unlocked, not unlocked, but progress that is locked you have to find these little blueprint chips and you keep researching them by tossing them in your blueprint uh module on the ship that's a little screen and you'll unlock things like new boots or jet packs i don't know if this game has jet packs but those are just examples maybe better pants go It was a decently flat location. I just build this in the air. <laughs> Again, hello. The whole reason why I wanted that was just to just gonna dump this. Get my oxygen back. Now, while you're going through these ships, there can be little locked hallways and whatnot, and you need your deconstruction. Yeah. Like this. Destruct this stuff. And then get into these little containers. All of that's kind of important. This is more important than most things. I could use water. I could use some oxygen, so I'll get rid of those. Um, pick food. Wait, I can eat more food. Pick fabric. Aluminum is good, but it's going to be a lot better later on. Grab you. Grab that. Yeah, so I know what else is here in the ship. Then later on, I can get a bit deeper. But I don't need to get deeper quite yet. Got what I need to get started. I think from here, I can run back to my little module over there. If not, I'll die. Yeah, I got stuck. You can kind of see it right there. Must move faster. Must move faster. Oh, God, this is a false. Okay, fine. I had it the whole time. All the plan. See, it's like a weird looking cat. You get close to it and then it looks like ice. Everything got really quiet just now. I can hear myself think. Oh, thank God I can't hear myself think anymore. Yeah. Getting stuck in a small piece of terrain is actually bad when I'm so close to dying. I don't want to use my oxygen tank. I'm lazy. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Box. I need iridium for the heaters, and that's going to be really important here in just a bit. I don't need a deconstruction module again. Iridium, iron, silicone. Okay, silicone, where the hell are you? There we go. I 
think I can be lazy and build this at the top of my structure here. All oh, right, I needed that iron. Um, is that iron right there? Boo. Uh, no, titanium. Got just enough space. All right, running back. I know my oxygen is low, I know. There's another game coming out this month. I was really looking forward to it and I can't think of the name. I know in August we got Wukong. I am super looking forward to Wukong. I can be weird about this and build the foundation. I think these permit me... Yes! No, no they don't. Well, let's at least get one built in here to get started with the heat. Yeah, another iron, another titanium. And another silicone. I swear that was not there before. Let's see, silicone. You? There we go. Oh, poop. I forgot to dump stuff off. Lee's gonna get the heaters built in here, and then later on I might might make a little structure or something and build them there. But as long as we're getting the heaters started. It's going to be helpful on getting uh, other stuff unlocked. There we go. Like I said, in heat. That's how we get the veggie tubes. Get a couple more of those built. Then I can start getting oxygen going. Well, more oxygen than this little thing. This little thing is actually garbage. I can build a couple upgrades. Silicone, titanium. Some of the food, some of the other stuff in here. And magnesium, magnesium, silicone. Magnesium's easy to get. Silicone is all I need. Let's see. Let straight back. Hello, Fire King. How are you doing? I am currently looking for silicone. I've been well. There we go. Here's some. Just working on my amazing base. Look at that thing. A plus work right there. Can't improve on it. I built a hallway. <laughs> oh, I need a cobalt. I never need a cobalt. There's one. And I've got the inventory space. Oh, that is so much better. That's a lot more breathing room. Literally. 
Let's see, tier two drill is upcoming. I've got a ways before I get the veggie tube. I got a ways before I get the really good stuff. This is Planet Crafter. It's not really base building, it's well, it is a part of base building. Building is a very big part of this game. If you notice, my oxygen is also tearing down. So this is one part of Survivor, uh, Survival. I think this game is up to eight players. Having eight players would make it a hell of a lot easier, by the way, than doing everything by yourself. You are trying to terraform an entire planet. Do I have a map? I don't have a map. And so you kind of start off in this little shuttle that crashes. It's right there. That little shuttle. And around you, there can be other ships. Like that. I think it's easier if I, like, kind of... Yeah, if I, if I go to the corner there. So it's right here. If I go to the edge of my screen, for whatever reason, it's easier to see. You can go explore these little ships and take stuff from them that you need. There's another ship over here. Uh, there's kind of a ship, and you can see it. So, like, where I'm pointing right there, you can see its screen just kind of pop up a little bit. See it? It's a little hard to notice right away, but it's... Look right here. I turn to the corner there, right? So there's one in that sand cloud over there. There's another one to explore. But it's also a little bit of oxygen management, water management, and your health management. I don't have the ability to build uh, a huge base right now. I need more iron and more titanium. I should have the slots for it. I don't think I've played Astroneer, but... I'd say some of your harder survivals, it's that. But as you progress into the game and you get further on in the world management or the world crafting system, it does become a little bit easier. And then, you know, new hurdles, of course, pop up, but you kind of get it. Like iron fields over here. Um... Wow, for, for a place that looks like it's covered in iron, there is one. This is... Satisfactory is its own different ball game, but yes, that is an incredibly fun game. There's a lot of copycats coming out, which honestly I, I'm kind of happy about because it's kind of a win-win when you get copycats of a game that's just really fun. On top of that, it puts a little bit of a, a challenge on the original creators. Right? So they need to keep up the quality of their game so that a copycat doesn't overtake them. Which I'm not 100% sure there is a, a planet crafter style of this. So, for example, if I was to just do a quick save real quick and I go to uh, exit the main menu. So here's, my, here's the world that we're currently on right here. Now, if I go to my original build, this is what it looks like now after you know, terraforming the planet. It looks kind of cozy. And then you have this. You have Doom, except worse. That is actually kind of true. It does look like shit. So yeah, that's what we're trying to create. We're trying to make this. And making that takes a while. All things in due time. So if we look at our, here we go. This is our progress bar. This is the overall terraforming. And as you unlock your, oh, we're, we're actually getting kind of closer. But as you go further into your progress, right, you get unlocks. So what unlocks at one KTI. And we're, we're going to get there in probably 40 seconds. This, this is about one per second. Oxygen unlocks an indoor ladder, not... All that great. But this one, on the other hand, is the heater. And that creates additional heat. I have a base tier one. And heat will unlock, eventually, this vegetable tube. Which will give me better progression to oxygen. Which will get me better progression to this heating drill, which comes down here. Which gives me better progression to this drill, right? It just, it continually plays on itself. Well, right now, we're producing oxygen with, with literally this one plant right here. It is producing oxygen for the entire world it all rests in this plants but basically i need to go find more yeah but right now i'm, I'm completely depending on this one little plant it is uh 
it is trying. But this is one of those games that the more you build, the faster it goes. Let's get you in there. But there's better plants than these. Like these ones have a base to say 1.0, well, 100%, right? Then there's plants you can find that are in like these, uh, these other ships. In fact, I might have the resources to go dive into one. I just kind of, I'm gonna drop you, eat you, drop you. It's aluminum. You make sure my beans are okay. I should have, no, I need a little bit more. Let me go make some oxygen now real quick and then I'll go, I'll go show you how you get some of the stuff. Why can't I? There we go. So two cold balls can be engineered into an oxygen tank, which is why I'm doing this right now. The nighttime is always uh, really pretty. That planet, I don't know what that planet is or why it's super green. I don't know that there's any story behind it. Or that one. Are there any more? There's one hidden over there. One over there. And there is a little bit of a story as to why you're on this planet or why there's also crashed ships on this planet. There's a little bit of everything. Okay, I've got electricity or a flashlight. We're going to head over there to that ship and I'll show you how you start to kind of, you kind of progress through the game and how you get more stuff. So in order to build up the heat that you saw, we need a very special material. It's called the... Uh, Iridium, I think. It's a red mineral. I have some of it on this ship, but you'll see how you get it here in just a second. It's basically just kind of digging around. Uh, we'll go here first. You get your deconstructor. You can go through stuff like this. There's plants, food, rest of this isn't really all that important, so I'm not going to take it just yet. This is what a tier two heater looks like, but I can't, oh, I can deconstruct it. Okay, so this is what I mean right here, uh, that red stuff. That's the really important shit. And squash seeds, I do need that. And here we go. Oxygen multiplier 200%. So that's what's really, really, really important right now. I will drink some water. I will take some oxygen. I'll grab more food, more iridium. Um, I can drop the titanium. That's really not all that important right now. Take you, take you. Because I can't build my own food right now until we progress a little bit further. So I need to take food from these ships. Now, some of the higher tier materials here... Uh, do yield better stuff but you need the deconstruction module which i don't have right now and you got to get later on by either finding blue chip blueprint chips which just unlock rng or you progress through the uh, planetary terraforming progress heat oxygen water etc This stuff is releasing methane, I believe. Increasing the pressure of the planet. And this is your crafting station for all your personal stuff. Yeah, so if I found a blueprint module, I could just like dump it in here and unlock something random. But the random thing doesn't come from this menu here. It comes from uh, its own little RNG pack. I think there's something of like 60 blueprints you can unlock. I could be wrong on that, but I recall it being really high. Let's see, at 1.2 UPI, I unlock something better. This is about to get to what I need, so I'm not going to build any more baby oxygen tanks. I'm going to start building better stuff. Let's see here. I need ship. 
I don't believe there's vehicles, but I do believe there's um like this. Increase equipment capacity. Wait. What do I need for you? Hold on. Uh I need to build this. Titanium magnesium. There's a magnesium. There's a titanium. something wrong there we go Got the backpack okay so much more room okay so over here <laughs> Eventually, what you can build is, uh, like, running boots, but I need these, these blue, these chips, right? The blueprint micro, blueprint micro chips and decode them here. And that's how I can get things for, like, my personal body, I guess is the best way to call it. And then from there, you can do things like run really, really fast. And so it kind of takes the place of a vehicle without really being a vehicle. But from when I last played in the beta, uh, well, when it was still a beta, no, there was not vehicles. What am I looking for? Ice, ice, silicone. So kind of the downside of this, I suppose. Ice, ice, silicone. Okay. But the map itself, I don't think was super massive, but there was enough for you to explore, to have fun with. Um, and there's some natural barriers that are in the world because right now there's no real temperature on this planet. It's really, really cold, although it doesn't look like it. So there are ice structures that are up and they do block tunnels and they block other paths like that. There's also other weird little impassable areas such as that throughout the world until you start to get to a, a better tier of progress. Oops. Okay, so I just uh, I just lost power because I don't have enough stuff out. Let's see. Iron, cobalt, cobalt, silicone. Iron, cobalt, cobalt. I don't have the stuff in there. Magnesium. There's cobalt. Silicone, where are you? Okay, let's take another silicone while I'm out, but I do need... Iron, for some reason, is a really hard resource to find, but there's tons of fucking titanium. There we go. Okay, just one more. You? No. You? No. You? Yes. But like I said, you can build this stuff uh, literally anywhere. And it automatically powers your home. There's an iron right here the whole time. Yep. Ooh, I can breathe. Let's see. I need a magnesium. I thought I had one of those. Nope.
So oh, good, I didn't lose power. I thought for a second that was going to go. Um, let's see. Lerma seed. Lerma seed. Okay. Lerma seeds are poop. All right, so this builds 1.2. This builds 2.4. This is just a superior plant in every single way for, the, for building oxygen. This one's just a basic one. Basic plant. Grows really fast, though. These ones will eventually be going away because they're kind of a waste for power. I can build better shit. What's my power look like? 7.7 .7 on a 12? Okay. Ice, ice, magnesium, and silicone. Magnesium and silicone. I need the black version of this. Don't mind if I do. There we go. And there we go. Normally there's like meteor showers at this point in time. It, the meteor showers will refresh the, uh, the planet's resources. So I'm a little surprised that we haven't had one. You. Just need ice and silicone. Easy peasy. I know I said that was easy, but I don't see any silicone at all. Is that one? There we go. Indoor ladder. So we are one. Ooh. Two, three backpack. So we are one unlock away from getting a better heater, I think. Better heater means better oxygen. Let's see here. Oh, shit. Um, I'll build this first. There. Oxygen is being produced. I just need water. You can also tell that the planet's really cold because, you know, there's ice, right? So you can see that the temperatures are below average. There we go. Womp. And a full. Let's see. So the better heaters are coming. One, two, one, two. So every two seconds I get one. I'll just wait to unlock or to upgrade this stuff. Then I can put the aluminum to use. I can put the iridium to use. And I can build better versions of these. Till then, I'm going to try to un or build out this thing here. So I need additional iron. I can go try this back area over here. I think you're an iron. Yes. Another one over here. And over here and there. Wow, this place is really rich. How did I miss these ones? There's the heater. Silicone, titanium, two iridium. Unfortunately, these tier two heaters can only be built inside. You can't place them on the ground here. You can't place them on like the top of the building. They have to be inside. So they require a bit of room. Oh. Um. 
you for now. And grab a titanium. And I've got enough to build at least one more module. I'll probably go to the right with the module. And I'll dump the heaters in there just to keep them out of my way. Since these stupid things have to be inside of a building. Wait, what am I missing? Okay. Silicone and titanium. That will go Zisve. They have one, two, three, four, five slots. You look like a silicone, so do you. for about two heaters so then I should lose power by doing this too. Just ran through there earlier. Let's stack these tubes together. Yeah. Okay, what do I need for solar panels? Cobalt, cobalt, silicon. How much iron do I have? One. Cobalt, cobalt. I bet I got a bunch of silicon down there. I should have enough to grab about four cobalt. Two silicone. I need at least one more iron. There we go. Just need... There we go. Silicone. Silicone. Got a few more slots open. Titanium. We don't have one in here. Titanium should be easy enough for me to find. It's all over the fucking place. Excuse my language. Well.
There we go. So our heat is rising rapidly. Our oxygen is kind of getting there, but I need to go explore more of these ships. And I'm thirsty. And I'm hungry. Dump this off. I'm out of meridium or iridium. Let's see. I can get a better oxygen tank and a food grower if I can get my oxygen levels up higher. Pressure is almost about to give me a better drill, so I can get even better pressure. Helps you find your way. Sure. <laughs> no idea what that means. Here's the... Oh, exoskeleton. Increases your equipment capacity. No, that's not the one. We already know what exoskeletons are. Those are the little... Uh, Little blueprint thingies that allows us for additional uh, uh, modifications on our armor. What I need to find are those little blueprints. If I'm lucky, I can find one in this direction. There might be one underneath this little itty bitty bridge. Planet Craft is a good game. Yes, did you know that it just came out to its 1.0 release? It's no longer in early access. Which is why we're kind of checking it out today. Um, there you are. This is not what I was looking for, but this is really good. What I was looking for is a blueprint chip. I'm got oxygen. There's a small right here. There's another chest in this little area. There you are. I knew you was around here someplace. Damn it, this one doesn't have it either. But I do have two iridium, so that's good. Uh yeah, no, they're amazing. They're six hundred percent. I Gear 300. Yes, 600%. What I was looking for was a blueprint chip so I could just kind of show the unlock process, but it's hard to remember where all those chips might be in the beginning area. Beacon. Yeah, there's not many, uh, there's not many plants that are better than the golden. There are better, but that's, of course, much, much later on. Take you out, dump you in. Take you out, dump you in, because that's a hell of a lot better oxygen production. There you go, 1.2 to 2.4 to 3.6 to 7.2, and those are just things that you can find in uh, your average blueprints. Our golden effigy. All hail the effigy. Uh, titanium. Make sure I have enough power first. 2.5. Yes, I got plenty. Titanium. Oxygen tank. Fucking beautiful. Ooh, that was an iron. Come here, you unbelievably rare resource. But yeah, winner. Uh, this game just hit 1.0, I want to say, God, within the last week. It might have been longer. Might have been longer. Ooh, you have nothing in you. Um, I can at least keep you up while I'm still building. Yeah, because I'm not ready for that one just yet. All right, so we'll get our Bitcoin farm placed here. There we go. I am <laughs> right on the border of going over. Okay, I need one more cobalt. And I think the base player of this game is eight players. So if you've got friends, for the love of God, play something like this. Sure, it needs a little bit of coordination, but this is a really good game to play with friends. 
It is. I was just playing it a little while ago with a couple buddies, uh, but I do want to do my streams and I want to show off the game a little bit. So I told them like, "Hey, I'm gonna go do this for just just a bit." Oh, and our friend is also doing uh, uh, his raid time for World of Warcraft. He still plays that. Which their last expansions have been pretty good. I wouldn't mind retouching it again, but I'm not sure if I really want to get into it because it is an addicting game. Up to eight players. Yes, it has a uh, uh, multiplayer. I think it had multiplayer before too, but that was still within kind of like... Um, I think that was still within like the beta phases and it had issues, but yes, Planet Crafters does have multiplayer. It has multiplayer up to eight players. Uh, and here, let me go show that just real quick as I, I can go show that real quick. Save, exit to main menu. So if I was to play James, James, join the game with an invitation code. So you can do that. You can pop into your game. If you hit escape, there's also like right here, invite friends. Right. So, yeah, uh, displaying copy invitation code. So, yes. Ooh, excuse me, frog in my throat. You absolutely can play this in multiplayer, so you can invite people. And this isn't really a, a resource heavy game either. So, um, tier two solar panels is just about to unlock. Fuck yeah. So, you can get, um, yeah, you can get, you can get your wife in. One magnesium. Ah, ah. There we go. You know, my favorite thing about Planet Crafters, like I was just mentioning a little while ago, is and something that I personally like to do. Uh, in my game, I don't build all of my stuff around my base. I I don't like to do that. I like to have my drills, uh, even my solar panels. I like to have everything just spread out across the entirety of the map and as you do that and as you progress through it starts to look a little bit more like you're trying to actually terraform a planet instead of having like a little unique base it, it give it a shot the messy look on it on this planet actually looks kind of clean it looks neat of course I'm not saying you got to do that I'm just saying give it a shot you might actually like the way it looks Get another drill out here for the heat. I want to put you as a king of the hill. No, oh, I'll be right back. I just spilled my drink all over me. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Like I said, I uh, 
I spilled a drink all over me. <clears throat> there we go. Hey, I just earned a bed by not being around. This is one of those games that I do think, uh, oh shit, I need water. Uh, and I don't think that I, <laughs> different train of thought. Um, I don't think that I need water, but uh, the one thing that's a little weird with it is that death isn't really an issue, like, at all. You just take all your stuff out, throw it in a chest, and if you have enough things that are terraforming the planet, you just sit there and you starve to death. Or, you know, run out of water and dehydrate to death. I'm not really sure what that one's called. And you respawn. And you respawn repeatedly. While the planet is just continually terraforming on its own. And you don't really have to do a damn thing. It's a little cheesy, don't get me wrong. But uh, if you got an AFK and you go to work or you have kids, all that other fun stuff, <laughs> embrace the cheese. Uh, I do need iron. I always need iron. Right now I need silicone and I think I just saw some. This is a chill game. It's just a task driven game. Yeah, it's a survival. You know, every survival is, is a little task driven. Um, it's a lot better, of course, uh, with additional people. What was I building? All right, oxygen. Oh, look at that 280. Mm. I think I'm out of aluminum. Yes, yes, I am. What I do need is more chest. So I can't use like any of this right now. What's my power looking like? 51 and I'm consuming 25. Maybe I can use that. I need at least two more of these. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, priorities just changed a little bit. I need more cobalt and I need to eat this food. Because I can now grow my own food. The thing that just popped up is the food grower. Ah, you see the ship a little bit clearer. Well, it's one of those games like you can have one person out and just endlessly farming while you have one person back home who's endlessly building and then getting the next unlock and then building the next thing. And building the next unlock, right? You can have that all in tandem. And if you happen to have more people, you can even have one dude just like heading out to the ships and deconstructing everything inside of them, right in the back. And then your builder can never stop building. He can always be building. They improve the graphics. I'm not sure. It's possible that just the point in progress that I'm currently at with the terraforming is increasing a bit of the visuals in the game. Because, like, I know that that ship is hard to see in the very beginning. I know that that ship is nearly impossible to see in the beginning. But I do see that the dirt wall is starting to kind of fall back a bit. That one was, like, the first hard ship to kind of see. And, yeah, because the dirt wall used to be, like, right here. And it's not really there anymore. So I think the terraforming is kind of pushing things back and making it look better. Because even this spot right here used to have the dirt wall. So I think we're starting to see the effects of the terraforming. I need to get back inside because I'm dying of oxygen deprivation. Alright. We've got O2. I'm going to grab a water. I don't need this much O2, though. What I need is... I already forgot. Aluminum. That's it. I need aluminum so I can build the food crafter so I can eat. Don't, 
I'm trying to remember what I can deconstruct here. I'll wait on picking stuff out of that bench because now that I just thought about it, I can bring stuff to it. There we go. There's aluminum. Aluminum. Beautiful. Ah, ah, there's a blueprint ship. And there's the mega drill. Hello. Food, shit seeds. What's in this direction? Ooh. And there's another seed. Uh, damn it. This is why you don't pick stuff up right away like this. Hold on, let me see. Um, where was that? Fuck it, I'll just dump it later. Or I'll take an oxygen. There we go. I am aware where some materials are, but at the same time, I don't remember like literally everything. I also don't need to remember li where literally everything is. I know that the aluminum is on the majority of the ships. You can't get to a lot of the stuff until the walls of ice start to break down. Like I think I could see one in that chamber there. I know there's also some iridium in there, I think. And until I can start getting into the deeper construction points, I can't find a lot of other stuff. Like super lumen or super alloy is a little rough until you get the drilling platforms up and going and I think there's like a facility way out there yeah actually if you hug this wall to the left there's a cave like way out there that one has got a bunch of rare materials in it as well now I got all this stuff why all right this thing Beans. Let's get rid of you. I'm gonna put you in. Ah, oh, certain things, yeah. I don't need to know literally everything. Oh, I really don't have any magnesium silicone on me. Oh, wait, this, this, yes, this. There it is, agility boots. No, I know that there's stuff all around me. I am happy to have faster boots though. I don't know that I need that right now. Oh, shit. Yeah, I should have been building. Oh, well. Need more water. Ice. I need to go in there and grab the rest of the seeds that are in that building. That one up there. I have a little hut right there. I know that some of the ships, yeah, I remember there was a power module you need, or was it these? Hmm, that's questions for later. All right, off I go. You know, the weirdest part is, I've been on this planet for about two hours. I haven't had a single meteor shower. Those are supposed to be somewhat common. The things that I know that I do not remember off the top of my head is, uh, here we go, like these. But this one doesn't really have anything in it that I want to take with me. Be rare, normally you get get one early. Yeah, exactly, right? You just get like the, the normal material shower. Like, oh, look, a whole bunch of iron or magnesium, you know, just normal stuff. But uh, I haven't had a single one.
yeah, I was just in my friend's game. And within the span of it, was only there for like a half an hour. I think we had four. Like we had one start, then it calmed down. Then we had another one start. And in this playthrough, I haven't seen. Oh, yeah, titanium. God, titanium is ugly. Look at that hideous thing. But in this playthrough, I haven't seen a single meteor shower. I wonder if there's some kind of multiplier on it. Like the more people that are in a game, uh, the more you'll see. Damn, that was a good container. I'm not going to break you down right now. Blue chip. Give me another chip. Give me another chip. Looted you. Aluminum. Drink that water here soon. Yeah, there's lockers, but like this stuff, I can also break down. I'm just uh, I'm trying to get the to the boxes because that's usually where I've got my seeds first. I have apparently been here. Uh. There's the power. Don't remember what goes in that. All right, for this, I am going to eat food. Take plant. What have you got? I need those. So, take an oxygen. Take you. This will at least get me one more heater going. Those are garbage plants. I've already got garbage plants. Okay, you know what? Garbage plant goes in. Wait, you come back. Blueprint comes out. Not reading all of that. It was something to unlock the blueprint and it didn't. And I'm leaving. Running, running. Uh-oh. Okay, no, I'm not lost. Did you know that your little ship there, your escape pod, it can uh, it can land in multiple different spots. It doesn't always land like right out here. But this has the most frequent spots for the entire game. They still never fix the fall gravity. Ah, ah, okay. Take aluminum. Oh, I'm finally having one. Oh, no, wait. No. No, this is something different. What the fuck is happening? I don't remember this. Oh, wait, is this just a sandstorm? It's just a sandstorm. They may have removed that option. Silicone titanium. Oh, blueprints first. Lightning speed, don't care. Compass, also don't care. Oh, tier three drill. What do you need? Uh, two titanium. Let's see, two titanium. So I've got this weather effect. I still don't have a shower. Got 
Come on, one more titanium. There you are. I'm going to build you right here. Mm, I might get rid of the tier ones later on. But like I was saying, uh, the reason why I like to build this stuff out in like random areas, when you're doing a terraforming thing like this game, it just looks weirdly cleaner to see stuff out there like that. I know having it nice and neat on the base makes sense, but when you're walking around, like I've got, I've got power over here. I've got power over there. I've got a mining laser over here. I have power over there. It just looks weirdly neat. It is, but when it's out there, I eh, kind of just leave it out there. Like, I didn't even realize that I had the tier two unlocked. I, I already got tier three. In, in fact, where am I looking at for tier three? Um, I'm already working on my way on Biodome. I'm damn near on the tier three Vegetube. You don't have to run cabling. Yeah, you don't have to run any of that. That's that's honestly perfect to me. This is moving a lot faster than I thought it would. So one, two, three, four. So I'm looking at probably about 10 to 20 minutes before this station unlocks. This is going to take a No, this will probably unlock about the same amount of time. This will unlock a little bit faster. Living compartment glass, useless. Right, the pressure tier is a little useless because your tier 2 drill is under here. Until you start to get to like the ore extractors, the nuclear stuff, the flowers, right, all this stuff that's just a hell of a lot better for pressure. We'll see a boost in numbers for a bit. Um, Yeah, it's just like there's some areas that are dead. New blueprint. Oh, uh, yeah, the communications antenna. I'm going to build that for a while. Not until I get this. Which, I mean, we're, we're really getting there. Right? And this is where the tier three stuff is when everything really starts to pick up. Like, pressure is 17. Heat, 0 0.25. Let's see. This one is 0 0.1. That's a tier two. 0 0.1 heat. 0 0.25 pressure 17 slash s this is 1.5 right the tier 3 stuff is just where everything really really starts to pick off uh the tier 3 vegetube so you can see that's 30 dot ppt uh where's tier 2 oxygen 1.2 this is probably gonna be around 30. we're gonna see that here in like a three-ish minutes that's gonna be closer to five so yeah, that's closer to five. Let's see here. Make sure that I have my enough power to do all this stuff. 51, 49. I do not have enough power to do all this stuff. Iron, magnesium, silicon, two cobalts. Iron, magnesium, silicone, cobalt, cobalt. Red beans yet? Not yet. Iron, silicone. Cobalt, cobalt, cobalt is easy. Ugh, my kingdom for iron. Is this it? Oh, finally. This extraordinarily rare material. Not you. Iron, silicone, oh, aluminum. Ah, that's why this is a harder tier to build. Got it. It's the aluminum. This is one of my favorite things about early games like this. 
right? Aluminum is just incredibly hard to find. It's rare. But then later on, you know for a fact it's just going to become so much easier. And if you notice, like what I was talking about, I still do not have a meteor shower. I don't know what's up with this gameplay. I, I, or this, this map. I simply do not have these. I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you why. Another aluminum. Did I use all my aluminum? Damn. That goes quick. Yeah, I used it all already. Ice, ice. I know there's an aluminum down there, but I just don't need it right this moment, or do I? I might need aluminum for that facility that's opening up here in just a bit. But you know, one of the easiest ways to get aluminum isn't really exploring ships. It's uh, it's getting a meteor shower. I want one thing. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, I've got what I need. You 200%, 150, 150, there we go. That should speed this, oh, 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 it's about to happen right now. When you're early on, it, it's good. So that's 13 oxygen a second versus 1.2. Yeah, see, like I said, tier three stuff is where everything starts to come alive. Silicone, silicone, magnesium, aluminum. Delicious iron. Food, you. We got oxygen. We're going to take a little tunnel over there. I think there is a lot of iridium in this place. Where the distant, that's new. That didn't used to be covered in ice like that. That used to just be sand. How much terraform index do you need to reach? Um, that's a slightly different, difficult question to answer because each terraforming index has its own unlock, right? Uh, you can unlock a whole bunch of material in each tier. Ah, here's the iridium. That's right. This place had it. I thought this room also had aluminum. Yes, yes it does. Got two, one more slot. Yes, um, when I was just there, it didn't have nearly as much as I remember it having. It used to have more. But Waffle, uh, what I mean by every tier has its own unlock, the more, well, every step in this, this game, uh, you get upgrades. You get uh, uh, terraforming machines for like oxygen release or heat or building blueprints, uh, yada, yada. It just every single time you hit a new tier in everything for oxygen, heat, pressure, and the terraform index itself, um, something new is unlocked. So if you look at the interferon index up there to the right, that's where we currently are, a KTI. If you look at the top left is 175. Yeah. So that's the first progressive tier is blue sky. The next tier after that is something like water. And the tier after that is like trees. And then it's like fish and then frogs and then not spiders. Fuck spiders. But bugs are also part of it.
in my utopia, there would never be spiders. But um, you're slowly starting to uh, essentially create Earth. So you're going to have, like, all the creatures, with the exception of birds, because, you know, birds aren't real. Everyone knows birds aren't real. And the world has massive changes. We're already seeing the changes right now. Like I said, that is, if you look, what, maybe half an hour ago, that wasn't as clear to see. That ship over there, in fact, those mountains back there, we could not see these mountains. And now we can see that they are covered in ice. We can see that they're covered in snow. That wasn't true before. Uh, that wasn't even true in the beginning of this alpha. Or even in the beta, this stuff didn't exist as a snowfield back there. So we're seeing that there are different, definitely changes uh, uh, in the world as it is right now, which is really cool. Silicone, silicone, water. Yeah. Let's see, silicone, silicone, water. Yeah, yeah. Even the type. The sky shifts very, very slowly, right? Oh, it's happening. I don't want it to happen right now, but it's happening. As <laughs> I have no storage. So this is supposed to happen a lot more frequently than it currently has. This is one of the ways that the world replenishes its materials. Is this the regular one? Okay, yeah, this is the regular one. One of the other ways to take damage. Um, you can take fall damage. I don't remember how massive fall damage is, but I know it is in the game. Oh, my inventory's full. As we can see, the sky is starting to turn blue as well. It's it's getting there. It's going to take a while. But, I mean, we are getting there. Water and silicone. I need one more silicone. So I uh, was the, the commercial break hit, but one of the other ways to take damage is by fall damage. That does uh, that does happen too. But yeah, if you look up, it, it's not just purple anymore that we're seeing. Like we're getting into turquoise. We're getting a nice a nice little blue up there. There's some silicone at my feet that I've been looking for and completely missed it. Yeah, right. It, it's a very slow, steady change because blue sky and to get to waters, we are going to start to get the clouds. And now we have a machine outside for oxygen. And I need the golden seed. There you are. I can also put something better in here while I'm waiting. And so this one has got 78 PPQ versus 
2.4, 1 1.8, 2. Right, all that one plant out there from tier three has more than all of these combined. Tier three is when the game starts to really pick up, and the tiers above that just, you know, it explodes beyond it. But this little itty bitty thing is going to start getting us into an even bluer sky. I need two more silico and I'm going to build another one. Yeah, Fire King, this is one of those games that where your decisions and your choices will slowly terraform the world and you get to see your actions in play. It's really neat. Uh, if you enjoy seeing a world change, this is one of the games to pick up to see that. If you can find silicone, damn, there it is. I just got a bitch about it, then I find it. A little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. You can build wherever you want. You can build up as many structures as you want. There's no limitations to that. If you want to build a giant just walkway of a literally tunnel because that's just something you want to do, I mean, you can do it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like a sea of sand. Keep in mind, this is actually an ice planet. There's, there's no heat here. Let's see. I'm going to need another plant. This is a 1.5 multiplier. You are a 200. You are a 300. Like I said, I personally like to keep my terraforming stuff around the area. It just looks nicer to me. 39 PPQ a second. Later on, once I get to the end tier things, uh, these will go really far away. Right, like how I have my mining laser way the hell out there. It's just neat to see all these structures out in the wild, out in the world. Uh, that sand cloud is slowly getting pushed even further back. We're seeing almost the far ends there. We can see the ring of another structure over here that's fallen. Right, and now the purple, if you look around the horizon, the purple is starting to fade away already. You can see a little bit of the purple in the sand clouds here. But beyond that, it's falling off. It's, it, it is going away. This is completely due to the oxygen. Now, the blue sky uh, being 175 Ti, um, that's building into a bit of everything. Heat's going to help melt a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the pressure is also going to be a part of the heat. These two kind of play into, into each other. Oxygen is almost its own thing. Have they finished adding the story to the game? Uh, we're on 1.0 release. I am new to 1.0 release. So... I can't answer that question. My assumption is yes. But I'm, like I said, I'm in the same boat of you as you are. I'm not 100% sure. But I am loving the progress of games like this. I like to see change. That's one of the reasons why I like to see Sandland, that little town build up. I love that kind of shit. I'm a sucker for it. I'm an oh, I'm a sucker for it. Need a little bit of food. Now, what I really need is the higher tier of heaters. So that's going to be coming at 80 PPT, and we're getting there. There's the tier, tier three. The tier four is when you're getting to end stage. Tree spreaders. Water life collector. Collects photo, phytoplankton, and fish eggs depending on its location. So eventually, you truly start to uh, terraform a planet. You bring life to this place. Oh, and uh, once the heat starts to pick up, once you start turning this into a real planet, keep in mind, stuff is going to start disappearing. Uh, for example, you have ice all around you. Ice is super plentiful. Well, 
once you get to the temperature that ice starts to melt, it's no longer plentiful. <laughs> it's an easy resource that you don't think about. And later on, you have to be a little bit more smarter about it until you get uh, uh, other different types of upgrades. So once you get there, be careful about that. Let me see. I've got plenty of room. I'm going to go grab some oxygen tanks. I'm going to go in that way. You don't get to research an ice machine. Um, you're going in the opposite direction of an ice machine. So what you get to upgrade is things like atmospheric water collector, right? So you can start collecting water bottles from the atmosphere. There's something else, and I'm forgetting where it is. Oh, it's a blueprint. It's uh, one of the chips you find. There is a modifier. Beers? Oh, no, no, Waffle. You don't, you don't get to make beers. You're not a real person. <laughs> That's actually a part of the story. You're not a real boy anymore. So at the very beginning of the game, you get basically an email that says your sentence will be reduced if one, you survive and two, you can terraform the planet. If you fail in either of those, you die and no one cares. You are truly not a real boy. You are sent here with the full-on expectation that you will die. That is how the story actually begins. We have an advanced crafting station. I don't really have anything to use it for, I don't think. But yeah, when I say that you're not a real boy, you are not a real boy. Not yet. That we do have given the chance that is true but at the same time you are building what you can with what you have and if you're going to ferment something you need that bacteria for it you're also on an alien planet so all of your stuff is coming through a technological hub But yeah, the expectation here is um, for the storyline, they plan to just let you die. Don't get me wrong. It's, uh, it's a little fucked up. Oh, right. This has to be built inside, too. Forgot about that. Let's build you right. Shit. Do I have power? Um, cobalt. Cobalt, cobalt, cobalt. Let there be light. There we go. How far over was I? 82 and damn. All right. So I have five tier two heaters at 17.5 kilowatts. One tier three is at 17.5. Let's see the difference here. This builds me 4.5 PK a second of power or of heat. And this goes... 28.5. So essentially 5, 10, 15, 20. I have 25 back there. Those five don't equal out to this one. That's what I mean by... Wait, how the hell am I going to get back there? I did a goof. There we go. These five are going to go away because... Shit, my door. said these five are going to go away. There we go. Right? They're just not good anymore. Oh. I don't think I can build Iridia rods. Or do I have any more? No. I may have gotten a little overzealous on destroying those. 
Not that it matters. But you see what I mean when I say, like, uh, oh, my inventory is full. Uh, the tier 3, tier 4 stuff, it's just so much better. There we go. That's all cleaned up. Now, let's see. There is this thing. I need three aluminum, which I should have. One, two, three. I'm going to build this bathtub. I'm probably going to build it like right here. There we go. I need nine iridium. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm going to need to destroy you. Huh? Uh, no. Okay, when you don't have any power, uh, you know, nothing works, so don't do that. I need two cobalt. There we go. All right, so I got these two heaters up. Let's see what heat looks like now. Yeah, it's Russian. It's starting to keep up with the oxygen. Starting with that thing is still going crazy with those two, two uh, planters out there. These ones. And Rod, we trust indeed those. The plant stuff gets really neat once you start to unlock it. Like this right here, grass spreader, which unlocks at 150 PPT. And we are really getting there. But so now there's the other tier that's not on this list. But the tiers of terraforming continue to grow. These three tiers are your basic. Now, grass spreader grows grass outside, generates biomass. Biomass is one of your other terraforming objectives. And so, see, this just makes you a nice little flower. Right? So, biomass becomes another one of your objectives. Grass, trees, uh, not so much farming. But things like, um, eventually, when we get there, once we start to get water, we'll start making plankton, we'll start making algae, right? And you'll see things like these, these pits, like this pit here is going to turn into a lake, or at least this one should be, unless they change the beta, but I, I don't think they have. So your ground level is kind of about here, so if you do pick up this game, be sure that you're not building inside of a hole because that's going to end up bad. You're going to want to build up in an area like this. Nice and flat or flattish. Almost anything that's kind of below or divoted down a little bit like right there. See how that kind of looks like a hole? That's going to turn into water. So small spoiler so you don't drown yourself and drown all of your equipment and put it at the bottom of a lake. You don't want to do that. And as you kind of progress out, you can wait until oxygen levels start to level out in the world and then you can go out and explore. Oop, got a little bit of lag there. Or you can get risky, bring up a whole bunch of oxygen with you and then just start exploring the world, which is what I really recommend. You know, get out there, play the game a little bit. Let's see, I could use magnesium and build another one of these, or I could, what do you unlock? 150. Yeah, we're just going to wait a bit. I mean, tier three really comes alive, but I don't know how much oxygen the grass spreader is going to build us. Granted, I might not be able to build the grass spreader uh, right away. I could be missing a, a certain rare materials as well. I do have some of the rare materials. Not you. 
Uh, this one right here. Shit. There we go. That's the button I'm looking for. Organize. These are a very, very rare material. There's a rare materials above this rare material. Uh, so winter, that's like literally every single person who plays this game. But there, there's no one who doesn't know that they are building uh, an aquarium. Uh, I guess I should build a dish and talk to... Oh yeah, it's this giant stupid looking thing, isn't it? Ground control to Major Tom. Damn it! Any aluminum? Not you. That's ice. How am I getting a message? I have no power. <laughs> cobalt, cobalt, magnesium. Cobalt, cobalt. <laughs> Dude, he'll get used to me. I have ADHD and everything and everything is on my mind at every single point in time. Silicone, silicone, magnesium. Ooh, 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 grass spreader. Magnesium, aluminum, lerma seeds. Okay, so lerma seeds do eventually get used. Magnesium, aluminum. Magnesium. Finally, I hope to get medicated within the next week. Uh, if you're talking about ADHD medication, I wish you the best of luck. I haven't been able to get my medication for five months, I believe. All right, so this produces 108 PPQ plants, right? So now we're getting we're getting biomass. So 108 PPQ a second versus this, which is. 39 ppq grass spreader is just a hundred times better than that thing well not a hundred no it's a 39 that's 108 so that's like 300 times better so grass good and so you'll notice it has a growth right so we're starting to see the growth a little bit popping out of the ground look at the little, little, little grass see so just a little bit like right there and so now, now we're starting the progress of getting biomass into the world. And I think, uh, yes, yes, our, our, our registration here is going to start changing with biomass. So the grass spreader is one of the best things you can possibly build. And it's one of the best things for these, these little baby shit seeds. Look at that. Don't disappear. I just built you. Oh, okay. The real stuff is growing. Look at it grow. Look at it pixelate through the floor. It's like a Bethesda game. Let's see. We thought that my wife is actually going to be doing pain demand for cancer patients. That's, that's good. Cancer patients always need more help. Always. They never don't need help. It's always good to hear that they're getting help. You need a grass spreader for your front yard. <laughs> but what I was going to point out is uh, the later tiers in the game, you start getting these machines that do multiple things, right? So that thing's doing bio. It's building the oxygen. Uh, you get these things that are building heat. That thing over there is building heat and pressure at the same time. But no, that's really good that you hear that, you're, that your wife is doing uh, pain treatment for cancer patients. Has this been something that she's always done? Or is this just like a, a new kind of like career direction? This is what I was going to 123, 129. Yeah. 
14. Fuck. Okay, that's going to hammer out all of my power. That requires aluminum. Do I have any more? No. I'd have to go on another expedition. Iron, silicone, cobalt, cobalt. I need silicone, cobalt, cobalt. So yeah, is this like a new career path that your wife has chosen? Or is this just is this one of those things that she has been doing, but she's progressing into it uh, as a career, you know, progression? All right, for a minute, she got out of the game for a while, care gaming fatigue. She did dementia and end of life care. Okay, no, I understand. Um, end of life care, dementia care, all of these. Uh, there is... There is nothing in the healthcare uh, field that is not stressful at, at all. It's all always stressful all the time, and it's not for everybody. It's it's a hard field, and I I, I totally get that. But no, good on her for uh, you know helping out people. That's that, that's uh, not the easiest career path that can that can be done. It always reminds me of uh, uh, people who also go and visit, you know, patients and, and children and all of them going into uh, uh, caregiving as well. And and I love hearing that those people take their time to, uh, you know, to spread awareness for that as well. Um, to even give these people who, who really need the, the attention, the time of day as, as well. Just it makes a huge difference just to know that they're seen. So that's good to hear that she's doing that. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, so I was slowly killing her and got told I was going to be a house husband. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. Uh, always being home isn't always the easiest thing either. It's not everyone is built for everything that we see everyone else do. Paying job or not, it's still a good thing to do. And I acknowledge that too. I need those two for oxygen. Watch your children is decided to be a pack of savage animals. <laughs> well, children are also their own ball game. She got a job today. Well, congratulations. Which field did you go to? Into? Getting a job in this day and age is, is not easy. It's it's rough. Keeping a job isn't easy either. Uh, you know, that that's a thing that happened to a lot of people, especially after COVID. Like I said, keeping a job, it, especially in this day and age, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It's, uh, it's rough. It is. And some uh, employers have higher expectations than, than what, you know, we can give them. But I am happy to hear that, uh, that you've gotten yourself a new position. Interviewing is always stressful. I, I understand that. I, I am sadly on the other side of the interviewing table, and I have to make the decision of who to hire or not in our, few, in our, our company. And... Yeah, that's not fun either. <laughs> but congratulations, four interviews. Not bad. You nailed it on uh, a 25% chance. <laughs> you didn't roll a one.
Good luck in your boom position as well. I hope it works out for you. Oh, this one job had four. Okay. You were going up against four other people. I see. I see. That is a little bit more stressful. Yeah, it's not easy to do that one either. Hey, by the way, just so you know, there's four other people you're competing against. Wink. Don't fuck up. <laughs> it is stressful. <laughs> Where's my emo one? Silicone, silicone. But all the same, I am happy to hear that you've gotten yourself a new job. <laughs> I forgot the emails tell you. I read that you have a greater chance of success if you build your base at an altitude. I'm not sure why yet. It's screaming in caps lock. Space food in your pot, maybe in space rex. This be the trend now to make people jump to crib themselves. Yes. Uh, some of the interview issues, like we had. I think for the position that I applied for, weirdly enough, and it's I understand that it's not super easy position either. I'm an IT supervisor now. Uh, we only had like four applicants. Now, for a position that's even harder than my job, which is a cloud management engineer, essentially a person who does the entire backbone of a company, we had something of, I, I think it was like 36 applicants right and that is just a lot of applicants and having to go through them and go like who's not qualified who is qualified just boil down to like okay unfortunately these 27 people are all super highly qualified and now i have to make this decision it's it gets stressful the job hunting is stressful the application process is stressful the interview process is stressful and just having to talk to people and open up to them like hey so tell me about yourself like, well, shit. How many people would I interview in that situation? Well, one, we look at everything and sometimes you can always tell how an application is just made as essentially, you know, bullshit. You can always tell when an application doesn't have the actual strengths to it that it applied to it, uh, that applied in it. You can also see when a lot of it is built into uh, AI's questioning algorithm. In fact, there's AI's out there that will tell you, like, this is built by me. Believe it or not, it'll tell you that. Now, there's the other half of it is to where you need to make sure that you pull the right candidates in. So, one, we would go in location. If we have someone that's local, neat. But it's not a deal breaker, and it's never been a deal breaker for me. So we interviewed only, believe it or not, two people locally. Everyone else was remote. And we had them remote from Canada to the United States. Now, due to us being a, a federally contracted company, we can't do overseas, period. It's practically a deal breaker on the majority of our contracts. So we have to go with the legality first, and then we drop those applications off, right? Right. So that's the first tier that drops off. So then out of the 36, I believe I had about 25. Now, locally, we only had two. So we decided we were going to pull the two because they're local. And having local is a big strength. So we pulled them in for an interview. Then we looked at the remote locations on who was closest within a time zone. And we looked at them. And we put them aside. And we put them all in a little bit like who's in this time zone, who's here, who's here, who's here. And we measured out which time zone could help each other. So we figured out which every single one can do, how they can communicate with the main office, and what their hours would be like. And so we put them all aside. We didn't turn off anyone, any application at all based on location whatsoever. We looked at how they could benefit the company. Now, if you look at the sky just real quick, notice there's clouds. Uh, look at that. Isn't that awesome? So then after that, we go off of, believe it or not, not education. Um... 
seeing a degree is great, but if I have a person who's fresh out of college, there is an issue that means that they don't have the real life experience that we might need with them. And since our position is someone who's taking care of the entire backbone of the company, those are the people that we have to weigh a little heavier because there's a lot of stress putting on them. The ground's not cracked either, exactly. So there's a lot of stress in that position. So we have to look at people who can handle that stress. Uh, we don't want stress to break them because in a position like this one, stress is really bad. It, it, it's really bad. We don't want someone who's new to that. It, it, it can hurt them in ways that even they don't know. And then out of the 25, I'm going to divvy it up to about 50% of that and interview the 12. And that's what we did. We based it off of people who still further their own education, which you can usually see that with certificates. And in the IT field, certificates are a big deal. Uh, certificates are, are changing every single year. They expire every couple of years. So to see those renewals are good. Even seeing expired certificates is also good. If you have those, keep that in mind. It's good to see that you have the knowledge and that you pursued that in the past. Having the experience in the field is also good. But if I have someone who has 30 years in the field, I'm not going to weigh him heavier than someone who has five years because technology changes so quickly and so fast that a person who only has five years in the field can keep up with the person who has 30 years in the field. And I know this might sound a little strange, but it's, it's, it's true. Um, it's a big deal. So there's a lot of factors that we have in. I'll drink some water. I need to get some cobalt. So I'm talking and walking. I do that in real life too. But having, if I have 100 candidates, well, I'll just go by 36, I'll never interview all 36. And the reason is because not all 36 are going to be qualified, right? Thanks for candid answer. I've always done that kind of cloud architectural engineering stuff. Also, and yeah, I can burn you out. Exactly. Always get asked, what do you keep your current? And yeah, do search, lab test, testing things. Exactly. Yes. Just because someone doesn't have the experience doesn't mean we're not going to take them. But if I have a brand new position, like let's just say I just have an IT engineer uh, project manager, I'm not going to get someone new uh, because I need them to know what they're doing. And me having to train them in a position that I don't know, I can't do that, right? I need someone who has the knowledge. Now, that said, when you build out a team, I have my senior. I have the guy who knows what he's doing. Now, I can bring in the person who is fresh from school, who is completely fresh, who doesn't have the knowledge. I can bring them in and I can now get them taught. And now, this is where I open up my company so that I can have someone who's fresh, who can learn, and my crew can grow. I have someone there who can train them. And that's really important. I would say that I would say that seven times out of 10, if you look at a company and they just run off of a skeleton crew of everything, that is almost immediately a red flag, especially like you're going to be, uh, you're going to be self-sufficient. You're going to be the only guy on the team. You're going to be your own manager. You're going to look at that position and be like, hell yeah, that's super fantastic. But actually it's not because you're not just the day guy. You're also the night guy. You're also the morning guy. You're, you're the guy they call at lunch. You're the guy they sit down in every meeting. You're the guy that has to build up literally. It's, it's a red flag. It doesn't always look like a red flag, but being the guy isn't always great. And I might get some flack for this, but sometimes being in the small world sucks. I know everyone doesn't want to be the person working for the big mega corporation, but the big mega corporation usually has people and that's huge. You learn from people. You learn from fucking up. You can't learn from knowing everything already. When you fuck up, and the mentorship is a big one, yes, that mentor can go over and go, hey, you fucked up. This is how to unfuck up. This is how to do it properly. 
And if you don't have someone there to be able to tell you those things, if you don't have someone there to learn from your fuck ups, you will not learn. And if you're the only person in the shop who is the manager, who is the staff as well, you have no way to learn. I also see people who get in those positions turned into sometimes into ego trips. It doesn't always look pretty. But I've, I'm big on getting people who are new, who don't know what the fuck they're doing. I, I like those people. I like to be able to train them. I like to be able to teach them. And that's how the field grows. That's how you get better people. You've got to actually get them in, turn them. Blameless postmortems are a must. Well, should they blame responsibility? Exactly. Yes. But you know, it, and like I said, you just, you can't learn that until you fail. Failing is how you learn. It's unbelievably important. And some people don't understand that when they're in these fields, not just IT but in almost every field that you have to fail. You have to learn from that. If you go in knowing everything, if you go in thinking to yourself that anyone who tries to correct you, they're on the ego trip, they're the ones who, who don't know as much as you, you're already setting yourself up for failure. And I've seen people do that. Exactly. You need what's good for the, the group, not the individual. But at the end of the day, you've also got to remember one other thing. And this is the most important thing I think people have to remember. Companies are not your friend. It doesn't matter where you go. Companies are not your friend. Everything else set aside, that is something always to remember. At the end of the day, with all of these companies, no matter who you go with, you have to be able to take care of yourself. Water. But yeah, um... But that original question is just kind of circling back a bit. I know I'm a little tangent. If I've got 36 applicants, I will never interview all 36 applicants. Um, it's kind of a waste of their time. It's kind of a waste of my time because at the end of it all, I can only pick one. And I've got to pick one who's good for that position. I've got to pick the person who I can rely on to be self-sufficient in that area, right? Now there's an ad break. Damn you, ad break. I'm talking. <gasps> Wait, that's got a seed slot. Can I put anything I want in it? Alright, well, I feel like something ad break kicked on. Like I said, um... Oops. I destroyed the grass spreader. Oh, that's not a grass spreader. I bit the wrong thing. Oops. Water, water, magnesium. But yeah, uh, you know, I, I've got to make sure that I'm not wasting their time. It, it, that's a big deal to me. If I've got 300 people, I'm going to try to narrow it down to where I can get them in, get them out, and I'm not wasting everyone's time being like, yeah, you've totally got a chance, candidate number 197. Because chances are candidate 197 probably doesn't. Because there's so many candidates. Right? There's just a lot of fucking people. So, and I think getting turned down for a job is 
it is a little heartbreaking. I'm not going to lie about that. It's always heartbreaking to get turned down for a job. It's also heartbreaking not to get turned in for an interview. But I try to give them feedback of like, hey, this is why I didn't, uh, why we decided not to interview. Uh, this is why we didn't go with you. This is why I went for another candidate. It's just one of those things of trying to make sure that they understand this wasn't about you as an individual. This wasn't that we didn't like you. We just have, you know, 28 other candidates who were so unbelievably solid and so experienced in their field that if I don't take them, it's bad for business. Right? And, and that does happen. I'm just going to go look at the sky real quick again. Look at those clouds! Okay. Now, so the fog that I was talking about, or the sand, if you look at it now, look at that. It's almost gone. You can see clearly back there. That is super green. I have a nuclear reactor. Right? I have all this stuff that's super unlocked really, really quickly, and I barely left right here, and I'm still living in a hobo shack. But with that, guys, I think it's time for me to call it. Save. Exit. Let's see if there's someone to stream. If each of those takes an hour of one person's time, it's still quite expensive. It's nice to hear back at least, but I understand was look at LinkedIn. Let's search for applicants. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's it's also not fair to them because if they have another opportunity somewhere else and I say, hey, you've totally got a chance here. You've just got to wait for an interview. That's me being a dick, right? I'm wasting their time. I have a thousand candidates. I need to narrow it down to the best one. And that means 999 people are not going to get a job for you. And it has nothing to do with them. It has nothing to do with them being bad at what they're doing. So I need to make sure that they're informed as quickly as possible so that they can go look at the next opportunity that they have. That's also my responsibility to tell them that. And sometimes if I find a really good one, I'll be like, hey, you know, I don't think we're going to be opening a resume anytime soon, but I've got these other people that I know. Is it okay if I send them your resume? And I, I, I try to do that for some people as well, because I know that the job market, especially in IT, is shit. Right? Because a lot of the employers out there, they don't understand what IT does. They don't understand what HR does. They don't understand what payroll does, you know? And any of us who have worked for these companies, sometimes the bigger they are, they have a better understanding of what their employees do, but not all the time. A lot of people see IT as an easy place to cut costs and it works in the short term. Yes, every single one does and they don't understand what happens until it bites them in the ass. It's the same with their human resources. It's the same with their payroll tax. It's the same with their safety. We see it time and time again. I actually worked on the oil fields in the North Slope and one of these companies sold to a store right in the lower 48. Well, that guy, he knew everything so he fired his entire staff he sold the pad that they were pulling oil from and then he's like why isn't my company making money i wish i could make this up but that was literally his thought process he had no fucking staff to work in the oil field any again anymore because he got rid of them he got rid of the pad that was pulling oil right how can you do that the company still exists i don't know how the company still exists but by god it does Uh, man, sometimes being an employee. I would say blinded by their own greed, but at the same time, sometimes there is stupidity in there. Having money doesn't necessarily mean that the person who has the money means that they're smart enough to keep the money. But, yeah, <laughs> enough of my tangents about work. <laughs> Anyways, everyone, I just want to remind you all, especially for the new folk who might be here, I have monthly giveaways. In order to enter the monthly giveaway, you need to be a follower. You need to attain a certain amount of points. And if you want to check out your points, you do explanation mark points like this. Look in the chat there. Notice how I have zero. I can't enter the giveaways because I'm point poor. Okay, point poor almost sounded like a point whore, but I don't have points, so I can't be a point whore. Let's see. Tefax. Tefax. I need to get that thing working automatically. But I will be back Saturday. I will be back Sunday. Hmm. If you want to see a kid playing Phasmophobia, I see him online right now, and I haven't seen him in damn near a year. Well, let's go say hi to this guy. 
stick around don't stick around you don't gotta we're gonna take a raid on someone also i have put into a, a way to um um wait what's going on with my raids uh something has happened to my raids and i can't even see the own person that i'm following what is going on here okay twitch updated the raid channels i don't know if we're going to where we're going but i will see you guys next time i'll be here on saturday if we're going to where i hope we're going we're going to go see maddox thank you for joining me guys and you have a great night I will see you again Saturday.